So I just went out and picked up the latest and greatest creation from Toshiba. Obviously, rest your marketing important. Before you even open up the box, you find that, oh my gosh, what's this kind of like hanging off on the side? Important firmware update information. <laughs> Good fun. Let's see what it looks like. Was it worth the wait for high definition DVD? They give you a free month of Netflix. It's kind of cool. Some component cable. Big, big old remote. Plastic bags can be dangerous and might suffocate you. Important safety note. So here it is. People have said that that's actually a uh, PC drive right there. So we're going to just confirm that in just a little bit here. See exactly what's under the hood of this bad boy. You know, they weren't actually supposed to include the Ethernet on it, but they sure did. So that makes the things a little bit interesting. It talks about that being for firmware updates and things. And little uh, content protection updates also. I wonder if the component output will do the full resolution. They were talking about that being downgraded a little bit so that people wouldn't copy movies and things. The rumor has it that uh, there's actually a Pentium 4 running at 2.5 gigahertz, hence the need for the big old fan. Let's go inside and take a little look, like you say. All right, the unveiling. Let's see what's inside. Yeah, sure enough, that really looks like a Pentium 4 in there. The North Bridge right here. Huh. And that's probably the EEPROM right there, actually. Some firmware right there. What's this? Looks like a gig or something. DDR RAM, probably. Yeah, PC2700. Nice. What kind of chipset we got here? Okay, after removing the uh, power supply connections and getting all the screws out of it, and uh, in the process, it kind of, wow, really looks like there'd be room enough for a serial port here and a USB there, but, well, there's actually no pads, nothing else to hook up a USB, just this thing for the serial port. That's still kind of interesting. I'd love to hook up a little RS-232 and see what that does. Looks like the chip's missing off of it, though. A little controller chip for it. Anyway, after doing all this, let's see what we have underneath the hood here. Well, nothing. <laughs> Definitely a Pentium 4 there. A lot of DSP stuff over here. Here's where the, um, I guess where all the component stuff feeds through in this shielded cable. So probably some um, component in these traces right over in here. Maybe it looks like even balanced goes through there. We'd have the component output down there. So time to see what kind of chip exactly that is. Kind of sick and wrong, isn't it? I mean, this thing hasn't even been powered up once, and already I'm removing the uh, the heat sink, the copper heat sink on the chip there. Sure enough, two and a half gigahertz Pentium 4. Hey, is so this is my good friend Scott. He's come along to help. And sure enough, it is 
every bit of a PC compatible drive sitting in that thing. Kay. So this hinges and then that opens the door, which comes down. Nice. So sure enough, it is just a PC compatible drive. So there's the IDE hookup. Goes over to the uh, motherboard. Right here. And there it is. This is a high definition DVD drive. Fairly nondescript. Manufactured back in February. That's actually a style from community okay, service. Um, I'll have to dig in and see how it is. It's gotta be just a standard drive jumper to his master. Sort of the last real mystery is what this thing is. It must be the actual OS on the chip. Here's what's underneath that label. The 